Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am Kelsey Celine. Um, this channel has been through many different phases and right now it's basically about my transition from being married into single mom life and kind of figuring out who I am, what I want to do next, and uh, the process along the way. So um, thank you so much for being along for this discovery journey and for all of your support and love you send me all the time. I really, really appreciate it. So for today's video, I went on my Instagram and if you're not following me there, that's where I post the majority of my content. So you can click that I card to go follow me. But I posted, um, ask me anything and I'm gonna be answering or diving a little deeper into some of those questions that you sent me. First question is from Love My Natty. The question is, where do you get your parenting style from? So I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. I don't really feel like I have a specific parenting style. The way I parent comes a lot from my own upbringing. My parents gave me a lot of independence and a lot of free will and I learned my lessons through experiences and because there was such a strong um, trust between me and my parents, as I grew older I really didn't have a lot of rules as like a teenager and in that translated to I had a lot of freedom but also a lot of communication. Um, especially with my mom. So she literally knew like where I was at all times. If I got myself into situations that I didn't want to be in or that I felt uncomfortable in, I could always call her because I wasn't going to get in trouble for being in those situations. Um, so obviously my kids are little. <laughs> They're only three and six. So this isn't apply to them at this moment, but I do believe in kind of facilitating like independence with my kids and um, wanting them to learn how to problem solve on their own and how to make their own decisions because the point is for them to learn how to decide on their own what's right and what's wrong and what they want to do and what they don't want to do. I don't want to be the one telling them all the time because they are their own little people and they're gonna grow up and be adults, especially during those teenage years and young adult life, I hope that we've created a bond where they can come to me with anything and they can call me at any time with any concern and know that I'm gonna love them and accept them and be there for support instead of criticism. Next question is from CC Zinni. Are you going to travel again? I, yes, absolutely. I'm really, missing traveling. I'm still trying to figure out my life right now and get it to a, like a really stable place where everything is like flowing fairly smoothly. I feel like mom life and single mom life and life in general is never really a smooth ride so it doesn't have to be perfect um, but I, I feel like I still have stuff I need to work on here um, to get to a level of just stability that feels comfortable for me and then once I reach that level I have so many plans to travel. Um, you know, every other week I have a lot more, um, a lot less obligations of just being where I'm at location wise. Obviously, the weeks I have the kids, I will be here in town. You know, Juniper's in school and Tabor has his um, learning program. And so I'll be here. But those other weeks, I'm hoping I can um, be in a lot of different places, especially. Uh, places that are abroad that are close by like I really want to explore more of Mexico and Central and South America and then eventually I would like to go back to Europe like Eastern Europe Asia I haven't explored Asia at all something that I'm really interested in is just more of experiences so I want to do like a combination of like solo travel where I'm just out with like a few things I want to see, but otherwise kind of going with the flow of what happens and where the universe wants to take me. But I also want to do a lot more like retreats or um, learning workshops where I have like intention and maybe community from groups of people who are coming together to learn something specific. Okay, next question is from uh, Vika Chica 24 who asks, are you dating someone? Yes, 
I am dating someone and I've been sharing like kind of little sneak peeks on my Instagram. Um, some people have noticed and some people haven't or if they didn't, they just didn't say anything. <laughs> so yeah, I am dating someone and he is pretty great. So we have like so much in common. We both love ecstatic dance and we both love traveling and I don't know. It's just been really incredible to spend time with him. I sharing a lot on social media about him just feels a little invasive in his privacy. And also I know from experience the level of pressure of kind of like going public on social media um, can have on relationships and I I kind of imagine maybe not forever but I kind of imagine I'll keep my romantic relationships a, a little bit more um, private and not so in front and center of my content I put online. Next question is from I Like Chai and she asks what are your favorite places on the Oregon coast? The places I've spent the majority of my time are like Cannon Beach because that was only like an hour or so away from Portland and it's pretty iconic, just like the rocks out there on the coast and there's just this really picturesque town where you can get really good seafood. And But I really, really loved Lincoln City, which is where Corbin and I lived for a few months before moving back to Portland. I really liked the glass blowing uh, culture there. It's also a big area where they do, they release like the glass globes if you've ever heard of that. They have like these hand-blown glass globes and I think it's every year they release like a whole bunch and then people find them on the beach. Um, there's more like whale watching and stuff nearby in Halem Bay. If I remember, I wish I could remember the exact hike but there are some just like incredible coastal hikes right there. Um, another one on the coast I really like is uh, Astoria, of course, because it's just iconic. Again, with like the Goonies and uh, the bridges. And there are so many places on the coast I haven't explored. I've gone to more of the mainstream ones. And I'm sure there are just like beautiful hidden gems all along the coast. So I hope that you have fun exploring. Okay, next question is from X... M Jarex, sorry, I'm I'm not sure. But the question is, do you feel like you are protecting the kids' privacy when you share so much of their life online? Um, uh, I've been wanting to talk about this a lot actually, so I'm glad that this question was asked. So maybe you haven't noticed if you're following me on Instagram, but I've actually tried to not make my children the center of my content anymore. And this was a choice I wanted to make before the divorce, right? So I felt like, you know, the kids are getting older and it was something Corbin and I had agreed once the kids started school that we wouldn't be putting them on social media as much. And I still feel pretty strongly about that, especially with Juniper being in school. And so I know it's something that they're used to and that we've done and we've created all these videos and content of like family content and travels and they have like a lot of their life online and that is not exactly protecting their privacy. And in fact, the family channel um, will be privatized. Part of that reason is to protect their privacy more. I do share them still on my social media accounts, but I just, it's not all about them. It, I want it to be more you know, focused on me from my perspective as a mom and also just a woman and an individual and less about them and they're the focus and they're the content. Okay, next question is from Amy Hall 18. Do you think if COVID hadn't happened, you would still be married? Ooh, deep question. Um, there's a chance currently, right now, I we would still be married, but I think how I feel about COVID is that it kind of was like an acceleration on the inevitable. And you know, I could be completely wrong. Maybe everything would have hit the same time as it did, but I just think that mindset, I feel like COVID was like such a shift in perspective for so many people. It just really put it black and white in a way that most of the time things are not black and white. and. Even though we all know this every single day that we never know if we have another day or hour or minute to live, COVID 
created a scenario where we were all kind of, or not, I don't know about everyone, but it felt like we were all feeling that black and white of like, we never know how much time we're going to have. And so if you're not living a life that feels like the one you should be living, maybe you should make some shifts. And part of me feels gratitude for it happening at the time that it did because um, even though it's been extremely painful and hard transition, I feel like the ages of the kids, it just seems like it'll be easier for them. Um, it's just gonna be their normal throughout most of their life of like, this is just how we grew up, this is how we were raised. And I think, or I imagine, you know, my parents were divorced and they got divorced when I was a teenager. And I just think that cannot be a more challenging time for uh, kids to experience their parents getting a divorce. And also, I feel some gratitude for both of us realizing this is not exactly aligned and time is precious. And I'm not saying those would have been wasted years. I'm just saying we've moved forward and we're moving in different directions now instead of maybe later. Okay, next question, similar trend or similar topic is from Kay Be uh, Beirut who asked, how is co-parenting going? So Corbin and I aren't really co-parenting. We are doing what is called parallel parenting. And it's not what I imagined we would do. We went through like a co-parenting course and that's what the coach suggested basically was to not consider ourselves co-parents, to not try to have a co-parenting relationship, but to instead do parallel parenting. Um, and I had to look it up. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what this is. I've never heard of this. I've only heard of co-parenting. And essentially, co parallel parenting is um, realizing and accepting and facilitating that we are both gonna basically parent one way and parent the other person might parent completely different. And instead of trying to create this cohesive, um, really interactive co-parenting relationship, we have as minimal contact as possible and we kind of live and let live what the other parent is doing in their parenting situationship. <laughs> situationship. I trust him to parent how he feels fit for his situation and um, his time with the kids and I expect the same trust and respect for when I have the kids on my time. Not always smoothly, we both have strong opinions on some things and um, we try to figure those things out when we can, but overall we try to keep contact between the two of us very minimal. One last question is from Kat42228 who asks, will you ever have more kids? I don't think so. I'm not sure what life has in store for me. This tattoo I got, <laughs> I got this during uh, the divorce. It, for me, it symbolizes just kind of like having an open hand to the universe of knowing that everything I think I want and I think is the best might not even be what's best. And you know, there might be something else out there that is more aligned and that actually brings me more fulfillment and more happiness. And if I just stay open, instead of trying to like grasp and hold onto the things that I think that I want, that I need, that these are so important to me, um, I feel so much more content. And I just feel like a, such a sense of trust in something larger than myself instead of feeling like I have to know all of the answers and I have to figure it all out. And I feel that way about having another child. So those are some of the questions you guys sent me. There are more. I know I didn't get to all of them. Um, and I really appreciate it when you guys interact with those so that I can have these deeper connections with you. I feel like there's nothing like a YouTube video, especially a Q&A where I can really just open up and share on different things you guys are curious about or different topics I uh, feel called to speak about. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.